and just go up to people and be like, hi mate, my name's Adam, what's your name? Do you want to be my friend? So what made you quit your job and adventure the world? Are you into guys? And then Onetico says, are you gay or allied? Adheep says, I love you Adam, I love you too mate. What advice would you give to somebody who puts off starting something new? Sheep says, not like sheep, the animal, but like S-H-E-E-P. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 6,000 subscriber Q&A. As you can see, we've got a very Adam Radcliffe setting today. I was just walking around some Malaysian island and we've got the waves rolling in, birds chirping in the jungle. There's never a perfect opportunity to do these things. So as you can see, I'm unshaved, but we're just gonna get on with it. And I've got some fantastic questions to get through today. So through YouTube and Instagram, I received over 60 questions and then I've selected 44 of them uh, for this. Hopefully I can get through all of them. We'll see how we get on. But yeah, there's some corkers in here, so I'm excited to go through these. So question number one from Classic Owl. What is your height and weight? So my height is exactly six foot. I think that's 182 centimeters. And my weight fluctuates a lot especially while traveling. When I left England, it was 88 kilos just after the marathon. And then I got down to 84 in the Philippines. I'm sitting about 86 at the moment. Dave Bassett asks, I'm 37 years old, want to start weight training, where to start? I would say your best, my best advice would be don't start weight training initially. It takes a lot of time for your ligaments and tendons to condition to being under heavy load. So I would start with calisthenics definitely for at least a year. Get into your pull-ups, get into your push-ups, just get into, you know, assisted pistol squats, that kind of thing. And get yourself into a position where you can do like four sets of 20 press-ups or like a set of 50 unbroken, four sets of 10 pull-ups. Uh, and only then should you really be getting into the gym and using weights as extra resistance. I've got a fantastic video which I filmed in the Philippines on how to train your entire body with no weight. So I'll link that in the description and pop it up on the screen here. So go and check that one out, mate. Kevin Suarez says, what's the best website for booking activities in the Philippines? Thank you. Here's a travel hack. Don't use websites. Don't book things in advance. Turn up to the best hostels. So what I always do is I'll just look on Hostel World for what's the best hostel in the area over nine out of 10 rating. And then turn up, ask the people at the hostel what's going on, what's the best things to do, how to book various activities. They make it super easy for you and then you don't have to stress out about doing it in advance. And then you get to do the activities with other people in the hostel as well. Which brings me on to your next question, which I will answer, Kevin. How do you meet new people when traveling solo? I'm going to the Philippines for the next two months. It's super easy. Like I said, book the best hostels because that's where the most people are gonna be. And then just go up to people and be like, hi mate, my name's Adam, what's your name? Do you wanna be my friend? Maybe don't do it like that, but along those lines, Everyone's there, I've met probably mainly solo travelers, more solo travelers than people in groups. So yeah, it's super easy to meet people and get on group activities on the first day. So if there's like an island hopping tour, then just go and do that on the first day and then people are forced to speak to you even if you've got bad chat. So you'll be fine, mate. Now I got this next question more than any other question. I don't know how to feel about that, but I'm gonna answer it. I can't pronounce your username, but you ask, are you into guys? And then Onetico says, are you gay or allied? And I assume allied means straight, but um, should mean, do you have a partner or friends, but you can be gay and have a partner. So um, anyway, am I straight or gay? I'm very straight. So uh, glad to get that on the record. Uh, let's move on. Sheep says, not like sheep, the animal, but like S-H-E-E-P. -E <laughs> says, pretty sure I spotted you in um, Kuala Lumpur Terminal 2 Airport in Malaysia. How do you feel about being recognized? That's pretty cool. That's the first time anyone's ever said that. Uh, say hello next time. It'll be cool to meet someone that's obviously seen some of the stuff I'm putting on the internet. Uh, and yeah, I like it. Uh, but it probably means I need to smile in future next time. So sorry if I wasn't smiling. Uh, it's all fake for the camera, you see. Oh, it's actually Schneep, I think. Uh, Anyway, he says another question. I'm following your push-pull routine. It's killing me, by the way, in a good way, I hope. But what ab work do you also do? I actually don't do abs nearly enough. Obviously, they're relatively defined and strong because I do entirely compound movements. So when you're doing compound movements like a back squat, pull-ups, uh, inverted rows, you know, the rest of it, you're always bracing your core, so that helps. But my three go-to ab exercises, which I'd recommend and that I do sprinkle in when I've got the effort, is uh, Romanian twists, V-ups, and hanging leg raises. Lead 2020 asks, what made you quit your job and adventure the world? So I was in a job, for those of you that don't know, for like two and a half years that I ended up absolutely hating. Knew that obviously my 25th birthday was around the corner and I knew I didn't want to be doing it for much longer. And so I thought to myself, Adam, you've got two options here. You can either do another job that you may enjoy, you may find purpose in, or it may just turn out to be a load of bullshit. Or you can follow your dreams and do like your number one priority and just aim for that. And since a kid, I've always wanted to, I love learning new skills. I love adventuring. I love traveling, hence the bodybuilding, skydiving, scuba diving, that kind of stuff. So I thought, how can I turn that into a career? And that's the path you see me on today. So that's uh, that's how things got started. And the motivation behind that was I didn't want to be 30 years old or even on my deathbed and think you weasel, you know you had the opportunity, you should have done it. It's the perfect chance, I had no reason not to. 
Um, so really I had no choice. Uh, this was always what I was gonna do. Raznade says, when will you go back to Indonesia again? There's so much more to see. There is so much more to see. Um, mainly Sumatra, I'm very interested in seeing at some point. But yeah, my time ran out. I had a one month visa and Christmas was coming up. So I will be back in the future, uh, but I need to let my stomach reco recover as well. Cause uh, I had barley belly for about two weeks straight and it took me four days to shake it in, in Australia. So yeah, that's never fun, uh, but I'll be back, but I don't know when. Bryce B432 says, what is your favorite healthy breakfast? Breakfasts are tough out here when you're traveling, obviously. My go-to out here, if I can, is gonna be like eggs on toast and a few bananas, two or three bananas. At home, my idea would be either a bowl of cereal and a few bananas, get a workout in, and then have eggs on toast or something like that. But I think my ideal healthy breakfast, if you could put money and everything else aside, would be like yogurt and granola with loads of fresh fruit and berries, um, and then a couple of bananas as well. Perfect start to the day for me. I don't like high protein breakfasts. Very much thrive at the moment on a high carb start to the day. Adheep says, I love you, Adam. I love you too, mate. Olivia says, do you have a five year plan? Um, I have five year goals, but I don't have a five year plan. So uh, I have somewhere I wanna be, like an idea in mind of how things look in five years. But I think if you plan for five years, there's so much variance that gets in the way um, and things never end up working out the way you expect them to. So I like to plan at least at the very least six months in advance and then maximum year and a half in advance so typically that looks like a, a year plan uh, that i work towards and then i have to like iterate and dodge things and adapt as as the year throws its things throws whatever it throws towards me go on, i'm rattling through these i think we'll be able to get them all done which is good but let me know in the comments if you'd rather i do fewer questions and at a slower pace and get into more detail or you like this fast paced stuff um but yeah i'm glad i'm getting to go through so many of your questions maroon bamel says do you think bodybuilding is possible without supplements away I mean looking decent I think more than possible is probable mate if you look at like uh, Greek gods or like ancient physiques those statues they didn't just imagine that you could have that amount of muscle mass without uh, those kind of supplements so it was possible people do it and look at this guy I met in the Philippines I'll put the picture on the screen he doesn't even weight train and he all he eats is <laughs> his rice so there's a lot of genetic variation uh, but he's an extremely active guy and an extremely strong guy and if you actually break down what supplements are and what their purpose is so if you say say multi I take two I take three supplements or I did take three supplements in the UK one of them is protein powder one of them is creatine and the other one's a multivitamin I still take the odd bit of protein powder in and multivitamins while I'm away but if you break down what's involved in each supplement protein powder you get what 25 grams of protein in a shake it's very convenient but if you end up eating 25 grams of chicken breast instead of that sorry 25 grams worth of protein of chicken breast instead of that then you're going to get exactly the same adaptive response so your physique's going to look exactly the same and then multivitamins if you're eating a perfect nu nutrient profile you don't need multivitamins to top them up but obviously it helps a lot and the other one creatine creatine comes from red meat so i haven't researched this in a while but i'm pretty sure your body produces one gram of creatine per day and you can get up to like two grams of creatine per day from red meat consumption and the typical amount that people supplement is like four to five grams so uh, yeah, you can get adequate, adequate creatine from a specialized diet as well. So definitely when you're getting into bodybuilding, don't prioritize supplements, prioritize eating well, training well, and the rest will come very easily. Okay, next question. Carl Utah says, one country you're dreaming to visit ever since and why? Uh, the film I watched when I was much younger and I was like, that's so sick, I wanna go traveling, was The Beach, as you may have guessed, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. And so that really lit a spark in me that obviously adventures were out there. You could go and do something completely unknown and Thailand was, as a result, somewhere that I was fixated on going uh, and always knew that I wanted to travel there. And so when I did my first trip three years ago, I went to Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, and the Philippines, and the Philippines just blew me away, and that kind of like filled that slot for, for Thailand. I feel like the Philippines is what Thailand was like 20, 30 years ago. Still relatively under-traveled, pristine places, so um, that ended up being my dream location, but it was all sparked initially from Thailand. Carl Utah also asks any travel tips you can share. Um, I've given a couple already, which is like, don't book in advance, use the best hostels. Um, obviously that's the best way to meet people as well. And then in terms of actual traveling, don't worry about bringing a whole pharmacy with you. There's loads of places where you can buy whatever things when things go wrong with you while you're out here and compartmentalize your backpack as well. So put all your underwear in one little dry bag, doesn't have to be like a watertight. I've got one here actually. 
it doesn't have to be like watertight, but just to like keep things in compartments, you can be like, okay, my underwear's there in my bag, my shorts are there, my swimming trunks are there. It makes things easier because it's a faff living out a bag otherwise, obviously. Right, I'm getting rained on here a little bit, so I might need to take a little break. See you in a second. A second for you, but much longer for me. Um, Carlito, you've got three questions, mate. You're a very lucky boy. Uh, skincare routine. Um, I'm flattered that you want to know what my skincare routine is. I'm trying to use as few products as possible to be as natural as possible. Um, I know a girl back in the UK and she, I asked her, she has like incredible skin and I was like what do you do because I want to copy you and she was like literally nothing just washes with soap so that's how I wash my entire body now just with a bar of soap I always have actually but um trying to use it a bit more on my face but typically I use a clean and clear like face wa face washing thing gentle so like light exfoliation and then I use a clean and I think it's clean and clear moisturizer oh no it's a clear seal face wash and then a clean and clear moisturizer because it's like anti-spot but also moisturizing I'll put them in the description as well oh mate this question is yours as well you've snuck four in there but it's a good one what's the greatest Greatest lesson learned last year and what's your message to yourself this year? So greatest lesson learned last year would be simply it's possible. Obviously I've said many times before that bodybuilding is a good microcosm for everyday life and from what I've achieved from being like the skinniest guy in the gym to like the biggest guy in the gym is it shows you that the only limits you have are the ones you put on yourself. After deciding to take the jump this year, obviously travel on my own, start the YouTube, start the Instagram and the way the response I've had especially on Instagram in the last month and uh, YouTube overall it just goes to show that with enough hard work, a plan and dedication, like it's possible. So don't get in your own way uh, and get after your dreams. That's what I learned last year. And that's what I carry with me this year. So in times when I'm unmotivated or the results aren't linear, maybe I'm taking a step back or I feel a bit um, just remember it's the overall trajectory that counts and it's hard work and patience that pays off. Jumbo 25, Mambo 20, what's it? Mambo number five. <laughs> Jambo 25 says, are you the person you dreamt to be when you were a child? Are you living the dream? Uh, it's good to measure yourself against where you've come from rather than what you can be like that's definitely the healthiest healthiest way of doing it like measuring the gain of where you've come from rather than the gap of where you want to be I learned that from a Chris Williamson podcast and um, I'll put his podcast in the description as well because he's excellent and so if I look back at what you know kid Adam wanted to be when he was my age if I told him that he was a qualified skydiver had been scuba diving with sharks uh, traveled the world on his own in like really good Nick like and extremely confident I think he'll be over the moon. So yeah, I'm certainly, certainly at this stage, everything I've wanted to be, but there's plenty more uh, that I want and progress that's on the way. And am I living the dream? Oh, I, yes, is like the, the easy answer. Obviously it doesn't feel like it. I don't think anyone feels like it. Even multimillionaires don't feel like they're never happy 100% of the time, but you've got to look at things from a completely zoomed out perspective and like look at the freedom that I have um, and think, yeah, of course I am living the dream. Simple guy x 789 says, why are people so selfish and cruel? I hope you're okay, first and first and foremost. But I'm gonna try and answer it anyway, even maybe if you didn't want me to. I reckon people are selfish because it's a human innate feature that we need in order to be self-preservatory, obviously. Our number one priority is to get old enough so we can reproduce and then we can die biologically, that's what we're here for. And so we need to be selfish to gather enough resources in order to fulfill that function. But once you've fulfilled that, obviously, it's no good to be selfish and you need to look after the people around you. And why are people cruel? I think people are cruel because they're upset with the state of affairs in their own life. It's because people are angry with their current situation and want to take it out on other people. So disassociate yourselves with those people. They'll either learn or they'll suffer on their own. But yeah, there's no excuse for it. And I think that's the reason. Marilena asks, what's your favorite movie? Um, I love movies. And actually I'm going to drop my IMDb list. I made like top 50, the top 50 films list when I was like 15 years old. It's maybe a bit older than that. Uh, and I'll update it actually to put a few of the, the newer ones in. But my favorite, my two favorite movies, they're not necessarily the best movies that I've watched, but I love The Gentleman, the 2018 Guy Ritchie movie. And I love Casino Royale. I'm a massive Bond fan. And I think that's such a good movie. So they're probably my two favorite that I've watched far too many times. But yeah, hugely into like psychological thrillers, action, just good movies overall, good Hollywood movies. So yeah, check that out if you're interested and need something to watch. Holly Critchlow asks, how did you make the jump to quit your job and go? I want to do it, but that's a big jump. How did I make the jump to quit my job and go? Um, yeah, like I kind of touched on before, oh, I've, I've pretty much answered this actually. Like I looked at my current state of affairs, I was turning 25, I could either get another job or I could go and do this now. And so it was quite a simple, simple answer for me. So look at your current situation. You want to do it clearly. So um, look at what's holding you back. You say it's a big jump. Do you have the financial resources or is there a time in the future where you can have the financial resources to go? 
Um, don't worry about confidence because it's such a great growth opportunity. So even if you think you're not confident enough to do it yet, just go and do it. Uh, and think about, yeah, how you want your life to look. If this is truly what you want to do, um, and then it fits in your two year plan or how you want to be a bit further down the line, uh, then go for it. But yeah, make sure you've got a bit of a plan in place. Efra 8 Vargas asks, do you, do you train for strength or hypertrophy? Uh, both. I don't like the distinction between the two, obviously. Strength and hypertrophy, I assume you're referring to rep ranges of like one to three and then hyper well, one to four and then hypertrophy being like six to 15 or whatever. Um, I train more in a hypertrophic range, but obviously strength comes along with that as well. I don't want rep max because it's not worth the risk to reward for me. I don't train anything less than six reps really. Dr. Lukes asks, what drives you to keep your daily positivity level? I'm not always positive. That's definitely something I'm working on, but there's two things that stick in, in my mind in terms of tools I use to make sure I stay positive. One of them, uh, both of them are to do with perspective. One of them is look at the perspective of your life relative to how bad it could be and the lives that other people live. Like I'm not a cancer patient. My family haven't just died. I'm not in extreme poverty searching for food every single day. So if you use that kind of perspective, obviously it's easy to be positive and you've got no excuse, no right to be upset to be completely honest. So I tell myself that and I remember, remind myself of that. And then a more localized bit of perspective that I like to use is when I had my job sort of a year ago, I kind of made this promise to myself. So it was when I was at work and I was absolutely hating things. I said to myself, listen mate, in a year's time, you're gonna be talking to a camera and there's gonna be days where you don't wanna to talk to that camera. You can't be bothered or you don't wanna do this, you don't wanna do that. Just remember that this is far better than uh, than the alternative, than, than how you feel right now. So yeah, measure yourself against where you previously were and take inspiration and positivity from that. Drake MRNX says, things that you should have done when you're 21 that you know can be a big change to your present now. Um, I don't think I would change anything to be honest. Obviously, I could, there could be lots of things in my life that would be much better than they are currently, but I think the rate of progress I made, given the cards I was dealt, uh, I'm completely happy with how things have developed since I was 21, and since I was 18, and throughout my life. I think some of the key features in that were um, working towards a goal even then, even when you didn't know what the end goal would be. So obviously I've always been working on my body. Didn't know how I would use it, just knew I wanted to do it and wanted to work towards something. Confidence is a massive one as well, so work on your confidence, especially while you're in that 18 to 21 range. I can, I'm a completely different person now to when I was 18, uh, entirely due to confidence. And financial stability as well. Realistically, you should be thinking about it. So it doesn't mean you have to try and get mega rich, like you've got to enjoy yourself but start to save some money and start to look towards what you're going to be doing to make money in your mid-20s all right little rain break but the sun's come out so i'm back and we've got a few more to go josh sadro says how long are you planning on traveling for uh the rest of my life i guess is the truthful answer but i'm going to be doing this stuff this kind of stuff for at least a year or so but i don't know we'll see david rodriguez senior says do you like brazil i've not been to brazil uh, you have a good rain, great rainforest, uh, and yeah, I guess, yeah, I do like Brazil. Jack Dirks asks, what have the DMs been like since the Insta's blown up? I think you know full well what the DMs have been like, Jack. Good question. It's opened my eyes to a few things. I now am not, like, no one can weird me out. Like, you could send me anything, and I have seen it before already, even though I've only got 20,000 followers at the, at the time of writing this. Um, I've learned how aggressive some gays can be. Uh, but yeah, it's always exciting, like 30, 40 message requests a day to flick through when you're bored. Um, and a lot more of them are girls now, which is, which is a positive. Next, on the same topic, Burley Singh. This one has made me laugh the most. Are you a hard f***er? And she means hard f***er, obviously, but if you're English, you'd be like, you a hard f***er, meaning you a tough bloke. Uh, but yeah, I assume that's not what you mean. Good question. Obviously not gonna <laughs> entertain that, but it was funny, so well done. Stanley Berry 95 says, what advice would you give to somebody who puts off starting something new? Pretty easy answer, and I think you know the answer, Stanley. It's stop being a pussy. <laughs> I think you're putting it off for one of two reasons. One of them would be you're scared, um, in which I would say to you, I doubt it's a world record you're going for. I doubt you're, you know, pushing onto something that no one else has done before. So don't be scared, other people have done it. You're capable of doing it. Um, don't use that as a reason. And then the other reason you'd be putting it off, like procrastination would be laziness. So um, you know yourself, there's no excuse for laziness. It's just a question of whether you want it enough as well. So. Uh, people say to me all the time, oh, I want to get in shape, um, but they're not and they haven't tried. So obviously they don't want to get in shape because it's a question of what you want more. What do you want? You want to be comfortable or do you want to be uncomfortable for an hour and get yourself in the gym? So it's the same for you. Like whatever that, that thing is that you've been putting off, then you've got to ask yourself why. You've got to ask yourself why you want it. You've got to remind yourself of that whenever your motivation 
um, meanders a little bit. And yeah, I use the deathbed analogy quite a lot. I've said it already in this video, but look at yourself in five years and look, look, like, look back at yourself and look, at your, look back at yourself from your deathbed and think, would you be happy with the decision you made not pursuing whatever that thing is? RJ SD says, what's the better mindset to fight anxiety and how to overcome them? I'm certainly not an anxiety expert, so I wouldn't want to give you uh, advice on what you should be doing. So I would seek a professional or at least seek some YouTube advice from people in that field, depending on what specifically triggers your anxiety. But yeah, my number one thing would be to say, look at what triggers your anxiety and address those things. So for me, I'm not a really anxious person. Obviously I get nervous when I'm doing something that it is duly nerve wracking. Uh, but times where anxiety has affected me in the past, it's been because I've spent too much time on social media, too much time on my phone, not enough time in nature, not enough time like actively trying to get peace of mind and relaxing. And there's two approaches to anxiety, right? You can either let it consume you and then try and attack the next day. And sometimes I've done that. So there's been days where I like, feel like I can't go to the gym or I've only been able to go to the gym and then I've just spent the rest of the day in my bed because I felt quite bad. Um, and then you just say to yourself, be nice to yourself, give yourself the day off and you hit it hard the next day. But obviously that's how anxiety manifests in me. It manifests differently in everyone. And then the other thing is, recognize it's a normal emotion. If you're like anxious over something you should be nervous about, then you just got to get on with it, you know? Push through the anxiety where it's possible and that exposure therapy will help you as you build on yourself down the line. That tide's creeping in, so I've had to move up a little bit. I hope you don't mind. A few questions left, hope you're having fun. Jacqueline X asks, would you make, would you ever make an OnlyFans? No, I answered this in my last Q and A, so watch that if you're new to the channel, the 2000 subscriber one. Uh, I haven't covered anything of the same topic, so it's worth watching. No, I wouldn't. I don't think there's any nobility in making money like that. And I don't want to encourage people to pay for like online sex services as well. So I, th I think if you are paying for online, you know, porn and stuff like that, then it's not a very healthy, not a very healthy way to live your life. So working yourself to a position where you can interact with people in the real world and find a proper partner rather than having to do that would be my advice. I've got a little armrest now as well. It's quite nice. Dumbbell geek, most anticipated destination. There's obviously lots of stuff on the way, lots of stuff I'm exi excited for, but I'll tell you what I'm doing this week, which is gonna be mega. I'm diving in a place called Sipadan Island, which is off the coast of Malaysia. And there's some incredible animals of there, like animals there. I'm not gonna spoil it in case I don't get to see the stuff that I want to, but like massive walls of barracudas and big bump head fish. So um, I'm very excited for that. It's one of the top 10 dive spots in the world. David D7175 asks, have you ever experienced culture shock in your travels? If so, what is the most shocking so far? Uh, I've been to Asia, Southeast Asia, like three years ago, so nothing was extremely new this time. Um, but I've been to some more Muslim countries this time, and I find it surprising still when people eat with their hands. I shouldn't use my left hand with my with, my, with their right hands. Uh, in a lot of Muslim communities, I believe in, or I've seen it in Malaysia and Indonesia predominantly, they wipe their ass with their left hand and then they eat with their right hand. And I'm just, I think to myself, we've got cutlery and toilet paper now, so uh, I get why it makes sense, but uh, <laughs> it's still surprising that, that people still do that. Alex Wright asks, are you concerned about the possible cons of influencing after your following growing? Um, no, I've obviously considered, I'm a very thoughtful guy, I've obviously considered the outcomes and it's not like my following is gonna grow to a point where, you know, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio and I can't walk anywhere without um, people stopping you and it becomes a nuisance to your life. So yeah, it'll be nice to get stopped on the street, like build a positive community of go-getters that are interested in the same stuff and like hearing what I have to say. And it's a small price to pay to do the thing you love. So uh, yeah, that's where I stand with it. Good question, very good question. And Lead2020 says, how can you afford travel around the world after quitting your job? Saving, mate. You don't have to spend every penny that you make. I'm in a fortunate position, obviously a position I built myself where I don't have any major dependencies. So it's not like I had to give money to family or kids. And so I was saving the vast majority of my paycheck. Uh, let me work out in my head what I was saving. So just to give you an idea of my lifestyle over COVID, I would only spend 50 pounds a week, um, like one year living in London, one year living in Birmingham. That'll be like my social amount. So like very limited dating life, very limited social life just because of the amount I wanted to put in the bank to give myself the best possible future. So yeah, that's how you can do it. Jonah asked a couple of questions, but they're good ones, so I'm gonna read them out. He says, were, he didn't say were, he said, did you work saving up for this or was it spontaneous? And then you worked up how much you needed and how much you had saved to get out of your comfort zone like this is sick. Hats off to you, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, let me answer that first before I go on to the second one. So yeah, I worked, Initially, obviously I said I did two and a half years of my previous job and I worked saving up for a house for the first six months. I thought that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy a house, I'll continue with this job. And then as the um, the glamour of the working life started to fade away and the politics start to work its way in, I realized I didn't wanna buy a house in that area. And so I just, just kept saving up until I knew what I wanted to do. And in terms of like how much you needed and how much you saved, obviously you can adapt your plans. If you've got two grand to spend, you can go and do two grand's worth of stuff. 
Uh, if you've got more, obviously it buys you more time. Um, so I just looked at what I had and then made a plan how I could allocate those resources. And yeah, to get out of your comfort zone is sick. So everyone needs to do it, everyone should do it. Being stagnant is death in my opinion. So, so yeah, thank you for the compliment. And then you also asked what sort of job did you last work and what reaction did they have to when you said you were gonna quit and travel the world. Cheers, bro. I won't go into too much detail, but I was a manager. So at one point I had up to like 75 people underneath me, um, but then I had uh, obviously other peers and then superiors as well. And depending on who you spoke to, they obviously have a different reaction. There's people that are like scared for you, excited for you, uh, think you're crazy, don't understand. Um, so yeah, it, I would say don't worry about what other people think as long as you have a plan in your mind. Like um, take advice from mentors who you respect and want to be like, but don't listen to people that you don't aspire to be like. The final question. I've had fun. I hope you have. I've rattled them out. Um, this is a good one as well. So let's get on with it and then I'll say my goodbyes. My question's a bit longer than the word limit here. It's Lucian. Glad you're living your best life. You're an inspiration. I hope you're all well. Now the next question. What's a piece of advice you'd give to your younger self, a younger self that's a bit more reckless and maybe doesn't have his priorities set yet? given the stuff you've been through now. Uh, a few things to address in here. Firstly, that I don't think reckless, recklessnessness, re <laughs> recklessness is necessarily a bad thing. You've got to look at what you want from your life and what your goals are. And if you're say 22 years old and you want to enjoy yourself, you know, spend time with your friends, uh, and have a bit of fun and be a bit reckless. Like they're going to be fond memories that you look back on and enjoy. So I wouldn't beat yourself up about that. Um, but getting priority set is definitely something that there's no excuse for. It's quite a simple thing to do. All it takes is sitting down, asking yourself what you really want. So I'll use the deathbed scenario again, or like the five year scenario. Try and imagine yourself in the future, looking back at the resources and the opportunities you have available now. What is the best thing you can do where you can look back and say, do you know what, Adam, good job, mate you did yourself proud. Think about the kind of person you want to be and start to aim towards that. That was an absolute mammoth. I think about 40 questions I got through. I don't know how long that'll be. Good length of time, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I enjoy that kind of video. I'm gonna do as many of them as possible when I hit subscriber milestones because I like obviously giving an insight into the person behind the action. So have a good day, whatever you're doing. I'm on this Malaysian island, obviously, as I said, and there's a lot of cool content coming up in Malaysia over the next few weeks. I'm gonna go and do some snorkeling and you're gonna have a good day. So I'll see you on the next adventure. Thank you very much for watching this one. What do they need to do, Kate? Oh God. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Ew.